to pick it harder. So uh, let's see, quick lesson on Dorian. Um, I don't want to go too much into the theory, but we've been talking a lot about two five ones, <clears throat> which is two chord to five to one. So when we're on the two chord, the scale that's played is Dorian. It's the same as the one, it's the scale from the one, which is G. We're gonna do it in G. A minor seven, D seven to G seven. So on the two chord, A minor, it's a scale called Dorian, and it's of course the same notes as G major, but let's forget about that and just think about Dorian as more like, um, you can use this over two five ones, but also just as a vamp. A lot of times when you have an A7 vamp, A minor seven, I should say, or it's like a, you know, um, there's no real chord Mo is stated, so Dorian comes in really handy because it's kind of bluesy, kind of not, you know, it's a great scale. And when you have the progression, a uh, very common funk progression, A minor 7 to D7, that's very common, like in Chameleon. That's Dorian, and the reason is because the A minor scale, the A natural minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, has an F, flat 6. So the four chord in that key would be D minor because that has the F. So A minor to D7, D7 has an F sharp. So we need an A minor scale that instead of having an F, has the F sharp. Then the G A is the same. So inside the A Dorian, we have the notes of the D7 chord. Or all the notes in G major, actually, because the two, two five one, I mean, the five is D7, so obviously the notes of D7 are going to be in the scale as well as the notes of the A minor 7. But um, playing Dorian, so the first thing is if you know the G major scale all over the fretboard, you, you're ahead of the game, but that's just the G major scale. You want to then take the scale and relearn it, thinking of it as an A Dorian. So we're going to take the main. A minor from the sixth string, also the main pentatonic position, and focus on that position. So the Dorian scale itself, instead of it's G major, but instead of starting on G, we're going to start on A, and it's going to go A B C, five seven eight, and then just a five seven. Then we shift down one, four, the F sharp, G five, A seven. Four, five, seven, B, C, D, and we shift back up to the fifth fret, E, F sharp, G, and A. There's the root B, C, and then of course you can, 
you know, D, E. So that's Dorian. And, and by itself, play it. So what, what, what we want to do is focus on more of a funk or jazz rendering of Dorian. And in that case, we need to go outside of the scale and start adding things. And so that's what this is all about. And the lines in the beginning that I use. So we're going to just go over a bunch of different ideas to add to Dorian. And the first one is very simple, which you probably already know, which is passing tones. Whenever you get a chance, so there's no B flat in the scale, we could pass through it. Or if we're playing some scale tones, B, C, D. Or ascending, now in between D and E. passing tone. Next is an approach note where we approach notes of the chord. You can approach any note, but generally we're going to approach the A, E, uh, or the A, C, or E. There's the A. And an approach just means you start below it or above it. You play a bunch of notes around it and then land on it. In this case, I'm just kind of using a basic, that's a very basic uh, approach. One below, two above, target. You can do it on C, E, A, C, E, A. Or you could get a little more crazy, G sharp, B, B flat, A. Or even slide two below, two above, one below, target. And you can mix them up. So that was the long one. And then just a two note approach on C. B, C, D. Notice I'm, I'm not always fingering on the same string. You can try different strings. approach on A, a short on C, a short approach on E, and then back to, and then see, there's an approach on A going right into a passing kind of tone. Ending with an approach note. So approach notes are also, uh, the next thing is approach, what, I'm calling a pivot, which is more of a Pat Martino lick. He, he, he really relied on these a lot, where you take a chromatic sequence like, like this. And then kind of anchor it with a lower note. Or you could do it like a real long sequence. Starting on the D, and I'm going down to the A. See? So we're always going after the D, passing tone, now we're pivoting on the A. C, A, B, A. And then that leads into a long approach, um, passing tone. There it is again, the pivot one. Next is the bebop arpeggio, uh, the bebop line, and this one is a specific passing tone on the D 
to the C. You pass through the major third. And it's usually done, it takes a little while to get the timing on this, but it's done on an upstroke. So you start, a lot of times you lead in with the E. Uh, but it's still on an upstroke. One, two, three, four. And so that way the C sharp, the passing tone, ends up being on an upbeat. And that's called the bebop scale, really. That's the whole scale with the... It's there, and I'm just playing scale tones. It's the bebop lick, pep, scale tones. Whole scale with the bebop thing. Now we're going to do the bebop thing with uh, an arpeggio. An E minor. So on the a really good arpeggio to play over the A is go up a fifth and play the E minor seven. And then maybe play an A minor seven. Or a C major seven, you know, whatever. E minor seven sounds really good over the A seven. So here and we did a lot of the Sean Lane stuff. You know, and that'd be an A. I'm playing an E minor 7. But in this context, we're going to play the bebop line. D, C sharp, C. And so the next note in line is B which is the top of an E minor 7. Very common line. 10, 9, 8, and then an E minor 7. 9, 8, 7. Then we continue down the scale. A, G, F sharp, E, then the bebop run, and then again the E minor 7. Continue down the scale, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, C. The whole thing, or you don't have to do the whole thing at once, but for practice sake. So, you know, you can just grab that whenever. If you do the um, bebop line, then throw in the E minor 7 after it. Next is the A minor 7 arpeggio. It comes in very handy. 5, 8, 7, 5, 7. You know, you can add the 9. Second octave, seven, five, five, eight. And then the root. But you can, you know, play around with it. Go up to the nine. So going up to the Minor seven. Oh, well, next, yeah. The other arpeggio that's useful is A minor major seven, where you go A, C, E, G sharp, the major seven. That works. And it also works really well when you get to the G sharp and then go up to the B to make an approach out of it. more of an E uh, augmented, but it's related to the A minor major 7. So we got the Parker idea is 
when you have this minor third. It's kind of an approach, but it's a, it's a different approach. So we're going five, eight, five, six, seven. So it's approaching this. And then from there you can, you know, whatever. You can do it up top. I should cycle back to is on the approach notes. Uh, a lot of the lines start Martino. This is a Martino kind of line. He starts his lines with an approach on the A. Uh, one fret below the A, G sharp. C to C, back to the G sharp, B, G sharp, A. And you can also do that on the E. You know, and then go into a run. Or do it on the A. Parker licks and the Parker lick, you know, you can also do it. <clears throat> we did, we're not really doing the octave, but two, five, two, three, four, five, A minor seven arpeggio. Ah, the interval approach note. This one's not, you know, this is kind of a, just a cool lick if you can fit it in sometimes, but it's worth it's worth knowing. It's kind of a cannonball Adderley line. So he'll play like the C, and then he's going to B. But before he plays the B, he'll he'll do an approach, but instead of something close like A B A B flat B, that's kind of a normal approach. He'll go. So he's using the E and the F sharp to approach the B, a shape. Or he could do a, a passing tone. He's on the C. Now before he goes to the B, we're going E, F, F sharp, B. And then same thing, you could do it for the A. That's the other thing there, you know, anytime you're going back to the A, you can approach backwards as well. So I'm going E, C, the arpeggio downwards, you would just hit the A. But here, we're delaying the A to do one fret below, then the B, two frets above, and then the A. Oh, and finally, the Martino variation on the bebop lick. He plays the bebop line, seven, six, five, and then goes up to the E, and then hits the B. And then resolves to A. So it creates a nice melodic kind of device. Um, he also, if we're getting into uh, a little bit more Martino, that's hard to play, so I can't play that. He slides his first, so what I do is go to the E, then B, B flat here, A. And then you're free to, you know, go wherever. All right, so those are some ideas that can be kind of try and work him into Dorian and it spices it up a little bit. And in the intro I played some I played most of those lines. But we should also maybe go over a Martino line or two. there I kind of lose it so I so I do a hammer on it so I can get the E can't pick them all um, so that's Martino line two now let's see what else we got Martino line three 
three. Next. All right, very similar, but we're, the ending is different. So now we're going into passing tone, scale, Martino uh, line, scale, then the bebop line, approach note. That about covers it. So those are a few uh, Pat Martino lines from this pretty close. I think I might have changed a few notes, but it's from Impressions, from his A minor Dorian solo on. Uh... On the Impressions, which is just A minor seven, and it goes up to B flat. plays the same kind of lines in B flat, and then, then he's back in A. So these lines are all very similar. You know, they're, they're, he, he, the solo is, it's an amazing solo. It's one of the greatest jazz solos ever, but it is repetitive. And you might notice that there's a lot of repetition going on here. But the idea is, you know, you, you, you play them the same and then you try and come up with little variations and add your own spin to it as much as you can. So, all right, that's all. This, so this would be mostly a Pat Martino-ish, Dorian kind of lesson. Um, and if you know the G scale, you know, you, don't, you can kind of take breaks from that style of playing and just... You know, play the G scale in any position. If you're looking to do more runs, picking runs, whatever, you know, legato phrases. You know, it's just G. But I would focus on the notes of the A minor 7. stuff. I am not warmed up. See, that is a problem. If you're playing a gig, I notice you tend to pick this very hard. It's very alternate pick it, picking. And then, especially with a clean sound over jazz, you know, when you try and go more hammer from nowhere, you set your volume too high, and the hammer from nowhere doesn't isn't doesn't come out. So it's kind of a paradox. It's a little tough to overcome. One way I guess would be to keep the volume kind of down on the picking runs. That when you do legato, it, it's the same volume. But the problem is, is Martino's picking style is very um, staccato. You know, it's very loud and heavy. So you want to pick it harder to get his sound. So. Um, but with distortion, it evens out a little bit better. But it doesn't sound as good with distortion. This is more for a clean guitar. So maybe this is better for the clean and the Sean Lane style. It is better for distorted guitar if you have a good distortion. It definitely is. But anyway, as Dorian. And the nice thing about it is it's always around. Take your A minor pence and then find the notes of Dorian around them. Go to the next position if you don't know it already. The Dorian all over and fill in the blanks for Dorian. Go to this A pen. You know, and find the notes. 
Words of Dorian. And so forth. Um, yeah, so thanks for everyone. Thank you for subscribing and uh, comment freely. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see you next time. Thank you.